Okay, so we're going to record a tutorial here, which is actually, this may be the first tutorial we've actually recorded at Full360. Uh, hi, I'm Nick, and this is Milady Bridges. And so it's kind of fun because we're recording this in 360 VR. If you have a headset, you can watch it that way, full stereoscopic. And the tutorial is actually harkening back to one of the earliest ways that we could routinely shoot full 360 images. Uh, so we're actually using a chrome ball, a reflective ball. This, you can get this for like $8 on Amazon. Um, in fact, I'll share a link uh, for it. Uh, the nice thing about chrome ball is it's fast because you can get the entire environment in one shot. Uh, it's super cheap, so you can use any camera, an SLR, uh, even you know point and shoot cameras probably not a phone um, but any camera any lens is able to now shoot full 360 by just capturing the reflection in the chrome ball now it's not the kind of 360 image that you would use in a headset and actually oh look I'm, I'm really here uh, really the two main things that we use it for is a reflection map so the image can then be used as a reflection in CG objects or an HDR map where we map out the position, color, intensity of every light in the room, every reflected light bouncing off the ground, have all of that information in a single image, and then use that as a lighting source in CG. So those are our two main purposes, and so that's what we're going to do here. Uh, the way this works is the camera sees the reflection in the ball, and any area of the ball that's facing almost directly to the camera is actually acting like a mirror and capturing the areas at the camera and around and behind it. So that's pretty straightforward. It's like having a mirror here. Um, at about the 45 degree mark, then the camera is actually capturing the reflection that's coming from 90 degrees. So if you're following me through your video, um, I'm off to one side. The camera can see me and it's about, I'm halfway between the center of the ball facing the camera and the far edge of the ball, which is actually seen behind it. And that's the interesting thing is that you might intuitively think, all right, well, this reflection is only able to capture the 180 degrees that's between the ball and the camera area behind the camera. But in fact, all of this area in the ball that is starting to shear away from the camera is actually reflecting the other side of the ball. So my reflection right now is hitting the ball on the side and reflecting back over towards Milady. I can see Milady in the ball right now. Um, and to show that from your point of view, I can stand over here. I am behind the, behind the ball, past the 180 mark, from your point of view, and you should be able to see me on the far edge. I can, I can wave, and you should see me you know, silhouetted in the green screen, but I'm really distorted. So in order to do this photography, we want to make sure that we set up the camera as far as possible from the ball so that the camera itself and the photographer are as small as possible in the reflection. The thing that we're battling against is we want as many pixels to capture the ball as possible. So we try to, you know, basically get far, use the lens as long as it's possibly uh, set. I mean, this particular lens is a 55 millimeter lens, so we can't get too far away. If you have a 200 millimeter lens, great, use that. Zoom in all the way to 200 millimeters, stand further away, the camera photographer reflection will be much smaller. This will be fine for what we're doing now. So uh, we're gonna shoot an HDR series. So we've already white balanced the camera, everything's set up in manual mode, it's set up to focus. And so the lady's gonna shoot a series and you can go ahead and get started on that. Um, and I'll show you the images that she's taking and each one is going to be using a different shutter speed. So in the first one, are you going slowest first or fastest first? Slowest. Slowest first, okay. So the first photo gets taken, it's a long exposure. What was that exposure? Third of a second. So it's one third of a second. So with that long exposure, the lights are blown out, but even bright areas of the room are blown out. But areas that are in shadow, you can actually make out the clarity in them. Each photo that she takes is with a faster shutter speed. So the entire image gets darker, but that allows for more detail in the brightest areas of the room to get into the photo. And we're also capturing this as a series of raw photos, and each photo is about two stops faster than the previous one. So we're gonna capture a full dynamic range of all the light. These lights are gonna be you know, a few thousand times brighter than the light reflecting off of this gray floor, than any light coming out of the shadow. And so that HDR image captures all the different light values throughout the room. 
So now that we have that, the only issue is if we based our reflection map and based our 360 image on just this perspective, everything that's behind the camera is, or behind the ball is going to get extremely distorted because of the, the shape of the sphere. So we're going to move the camera 90 degrees. It'll still be about the same distance from the chrome ball itself. I'll move out of the way of the photos. Uh, but because we're coming at the ball from a different direction, the areas that are most distorted are different areas of the room. So when we shoot the exact same exposure series from this different angle, that'll allow us to essentially get two different chrome ball images, layer them on top of each other, and then effectively mask out the most distorted areas and potentially even mask out the uh, photographer. So in this series, I'm actually standing where she was standing when she took the original photos. Um, what we'll probably do is cheat, just do a whole different set of photos where I'm out of the room. Uh, but then we'll use that and process them through. So this is the studio portion of the photos. Uh, you would do this every time you would want to capture a full 360 degree reflection map or light map to be used in CG. Now ultimately we're going to be rendering out of Maya, but there's a few steps in between. So we've got a total of four tutorials. This is the first one. So we're going to go uh, from here to one that's uh, using Photoshop to process the raw images and convert them into an HDR image series for each angle. Uh, then we'll do another tutorial that'll go into Nuke and convert those rectangular images of the reflection in the ball into echo rectangular 360 images, and then our last tutorial will be in Maya. Hopefully, we'll actually be able to light some CG objects and it'll work. So that's it for this t uh, tutorial. We'll uh, see, hopefully this works by the end of the series. Until next time, have fun. Ha, 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 ha.